So here's the clock that we're going to work with. Um, we can clearly identify it from the front. Uh, right here it says Telecron. Uh, but if we flip it over, we can see written right here on the back. Uh, again, it says Telecron Electric Clock Model 4H55. Now this particular one here, the Model 4H55, is called the Statesman. And it's a mantle clock. And it was manufactured in about 1945-46. What we have is we've got a plastic case, we've got a brass ring with Roman numerals that are painted and recessed, the hands and the second hand are also brass. If we turn it over, our power cable is still in good shape and right here is the knob that we use. If we give it a little pull out, the hands still move. But the big test comes when we try to plug it in. Now I've plugged this one in once before so I know what's going to happen. The second hand isn't moving. With a clock like this, that's actually fairly common because the motor mechanism inside this clock is called a Telecron rotor. And while Telecron rotors were a very good design and they made thousands of them back in the 1940s, they didn't last forever. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this clock apart and we're going to rejuvenate the Telecron rotor. So I've got it unplugged for safety. I'm going to get my assistant Connor to hold the clock in place right like that. And the first thing we're going to need is just a regular slotted screwdriver. Now as we're taking these screws out you'll notice that there's something interesting about them. Right there. You notice that they are sitting on a little spring. We've got the main screws out. We need to take off the little button on the back that's used for adjusting the time. Hold those pliers, hold on to the pole that's directly underneath the screw, keep it in place while your assistant removes the little screw with his fingers. Connor, I'll hold this. You take the white plastic off and put it over there as well. Okay. I'm going to hold it and you can get busy. Now if you have a look this whole mechanism comes up and out like that and we can get to the rotor. The rotor is actually just sitting in here and I can just pull it out. You can see that it's a sealed unit and that's exactly the way it's intended to be because it's full of oil. Now when they're new the oil is nice and slippery and viscous and when it's into the mechanism it turns this gear at exactly 3.6 revolutions per minute. The problems happen when, over a number of years, the oil that's in these sealed units dries out. And what you end up with is a Telecron rotor that's seized. What we need to do is we need to unseize the oil. We're going to do that by using heat to melt the oil, and we're going to pour new oil in through the little port that sits underneath the gear in that little cup. I found this upstairs and what it is, it was a little uh, gift basket I think that uh, my wife got some bath supplies in and what we're going to do is we're going to use it this way. Turn it upside down like that. We're going to put the light bulb inside. We're going to wire up the light bulb and our rotor is going to sit on top just like that and it's going to be heated nice and evenly. We've got our light bulb wired up and inside our little cage 
It's a 150 watt bulb so we can generate some decent heat. We've got our Telecron rotor just sitting right here on top. And it's important that the bulb doesn't touch the rotor. We want the radiant heat to move up and around the rotor to warm it up a nice even pace so we can melt the existing oil and top it up with some new oil. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. I can really feel the heat coming off this. Use a pair of pliers or something to take it off. We'll have a look, see how it's doing. Now remember, this gear was completely seized and solid 10 minutes ago. Let's see if we've got any movement now. Well, look at that. We're going to put a drop in there and it'll kind of pool up underneath. And as the rotor cools down, it'll suck up the oil that's sitting in the little pool, mix in with the oil that's there to rejuvenate it and get this thing running again. There we go. To clean up the, uh, the brass ring, I'm just going to use your standard uh, off-the-shelf uh, brass uh, polish. So now it's time to put our clock back together. So this is the brass ring that we just finished cleaning. Now we got to make sure that we keep our XII or our number 12 oriented to the top. And that's easy to do because on the back of the clock, or on the back of the brass ring rather, there's a little tab that indicates which way is the top. Lay that in just like so. There's a little tab here and the face fits into that to make sure it's oriented to the top. And then it gets turned over and put into place. When we lift this up, it falls into place, just like that. Our screws are gonna go back down through the posts and hold the rotor assembly in place. Now that the rotor is back in place, do a little demonstration. The gear from the rotor you can see straight down the center here, right at the tip of the knife. And it's meshing with the gears of the clock. Now remember, that rotor doesn't turn very fast. Well, I'm going to plug it in, and we're going to watch her go. So there we go, our Telecron Statesman with the frozen rotor is back in service and keeping time. And if we remember to open it up and put some oil in it once in a while, it should do that for many years to come. <laughs>